At the end of 1962, the Beatles reached the top of the music scene in England with Love Me Do and Please Please Me. Radio Luxembourg was the first station in Europe to play a Beatles record. This is Radio Luxembourg. Well, now, the Beatles have this new one, and when it hit number three last week, you may recall, I predicted a number one slot for it. And sure enough, this week, at the top of the top 20, the Beatles with From Me To You. Broadcasting on 208 meters, the signal reached into Europe and parts of North Africa. In January of 1963, Parlophone, the company that had rights to all Beatles songs, decided to release Please Please Me to America. Parlophone contacted Capital, its sister company, and Capital passed. Parlophone then made an offer to VJ, a black artist's label, home to artists like Gene Chandler, Jerry Butler, and Little Richard. VJ took a shot. They had nothing to lose. Please Please Me was released in February of 1963. VJ didn't care very much about this group, and they even spelled the Beatles' name wrong and used two T's. Today, if you can find one of those 45s, they're worth a fortune. VJ Records was located in Chicago. So was WLS, a 50,000-watt top 40 station that at night could be heard in 38 states. It stood to reason that WLS would pick up a release by a local company. In March, Please Please Me entered the WLS Silver Dollar Survey, with the Beatles' name spelled wrong, just like on the record. It debuted at number 40 on March 8, and in two weeks, it went up to number 35. So this is documented evidence that WLS was the first station in America to play a Beatles record. Now, there has been some controversy. Murray the K from WINS in New York claimed he was the first person to play a Beatles record, but no evidence exists to support this. At night, WLS had a segment that played records from new groups. It was hosted by Dick Biondi, who had come from WKBW in Buffalo. Dick Biondi on WLS Radio, wherever you are, I hope you're smiling, and remember the old saying there that it's our third anniversary. Happy birthday to me. You mean you've been here three years? Biondi yeah. says he played many new artists that were never heard of again. He may not have remembered playing the record in 1963. At the end of March, the Beatles record went off the WLS charts. It had sold 5,560 copies. VJ Records had a reputation for not paying its bills. The president of VJ, Ewart Abner, had many gambling debts, and since the Beatles record did not sell very well, he decided not to pay Parlophone. Lawsuits started against VJ. Parlophone decided to release She Loves You, and on the B-side, I'll Get You, to Swan Records, based in Philadelphia. Swan was chosen because the record might be picked up and played by Dick Clark on WFIL. Dick Clark did play the record on American Bandstand, but it only got a 73 rating. America was not ready yet for the mop-haired group from England. It did play on KRLA in Los Angeles and hit number 40, but the record just did not sell. Fast forward to November 1963. Dick Smith, program director for WORC in Worcester, had a reputation for playing records that would later become national hits. Dick Smith came from Portland, Maine, where he was host for Spike Jones and the City Slickers. The City Slickers all wore derbies. When Dick Smith came to Worcester, the management of WORC wanted him to change his name because they thought it was too common. Smith wanted to keep his own name, but decided to add the derby. So from that time on, he would always be known as Dick the Derby Smith. During his career at WORC, Dick Smith would receive 25 gold records. Some of his hits included See You in September, Bobby's Girl, and The Lion Sleeps Tonight. In early November, he decided to play She Loves You on the Break It or Save It segment on Open House. We want to remind everyone that President Kennedy will hold a news conference tonight. WORC will broadcast a news conference live beginning at 8 p.m. tonight. Okay, gang, it's now 15 minutes past the hour of 3 o'clock. Time for Break It or Save It. Today we have a new group that calls themselves the Beatles. I guess it's like the bug. I'm looking at a picture of these guys, and boy, they need a haircut real bad. I have Dick Smith that says the Beatles are the number one group in England. We'll see. Dick also says that Lad's Music Store has Beatle records in stock right now. So here they are on Swan Records, the Beatles.
dancing and she loves you. Shall we break it or save it? Now, memories can fade over the years, and nobody can really remember which DJ played the Beatles record for the first time. During 1963, Bob Breyer, station owner, Skip Erickson, and Dick Smith all hosted the open house show. It's safe to say that one of these DJs played the record. The B-side, I'll Get You, reached the WORC All Request Survey. When a song reached the top of the WORC charts, record companies would notice. The president of Swan Records, Tony Marinello, also noticed. He decided to visit Worcester and meet with Dick Smith. I remember the day vividly because I was having lunch with him and a couple other record executives and trying to sell him on the fact that you better get on the ball and get behind this group, the Beatles. We were interrupted at lunch with a bulletin that came over the uh, radio and television to the effect that uh, John F. Kennedy was just assassinated. On February 9, 1964, the Beatles performed on the Ed Sullivan Show, and the rest, as they say, is history. Dick Smith received a gold record from Swan Records with the inscription, She Loves You from the Beatles, produced by George Martin, to Dick Smith, WORC, America's first believer in the Beatles. Who played the first Beatles record in America was written by Bob Swenson, your announcer Mark Drew, WORC News.